welcome to Northern Fishing Talk. I'm your host Kirk Backer and I know it's been a couple weeks since my last video and I've cleaned up and I've shaven up so it's time to get back into doing some of these videos. I've been a little busy with doing some online schoolwork, trying to get out doing some fishing as much as I can too and um, so with that being said let's get right into this. Now with this episode I've had um, like I said in the last one, in the last episode I had some issues with Mystery Tackle Box. Not it was not that it was their fault, but it was the fact that they had sent out the box, it got to the Canadian border, and then somehow it disappeared from there. Canada Post never delivered it to me, um, so I don't know what happened. But luckily, I got a hold of the guys at Mystery Tackle Box, and they were great, and they sent out the, the box to me as soon as they could. So with that being said, I'm going to go through the, the stuff that they sent me in this walleye box. I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks on how I would rig it, what I'd use it with, if I would use it uh, in the spring, summer, fall, that kind of deal, um, or even maybe the winter depending on what they send. And then I'm going to go from there. Uh, I'm going to give you a little heads up on what's going to be coming up. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to the contest winner. And I'm going to give a shout out uh, to a couple of friends of mine uh, out there that uh, have been, oh, excuse me, that have been wanting uh, a little bit of a shout out. Um, so anyways, let's get this going. Okay, so first things first, as we know, that always comes in the box is the card. Well, the card also get, like gives you your information and all that. And I do like reading some of these write-ups because some of them are, are neat, some of them are funny, and some of them I just kind of shake my head at. But first things first, after the card, you look in the box, get your little scratch ticket, and that, so once again, scratch it, get three identical ones, scratch and see what the prize is, that's what you get. Get your mystery tackle box sticker. I'm trying to move it so that you don't get too much of a shine on it. I've got tons of those and I give them to my kids. Thank God they love stickers. Get the Dibble Digest. Um, I have gone through it and there are some interesting articles I'm gonna be looking forward to reading, deep structure fishing, um, seven common forage species and how to match the hatch. That one I'm kind of interested in um, and I'm gonna go from there. So anyways, first things first, the long A bomber bait. Now this goes two to three feet. It's a flipping shad color. Um, I, I do like bomber baits and that, and I mean like, if you listen, there's a pretty good rattle in that right there. So. So, I mean, I do like that. I, the one thing I'm just not thrilled about is two to three feet. Um, but like it says here in the card, twitch, twitch, pause rhythm, or add weight to get it deeper. Um, I just might add some weights onto the belly. Just try and balance it out a little bit and see if I can get a little bit deeper. But it says uh, this skinny jerk bait calls in the big walleye. And so we're gonna see if that'll work. This, um, I would probably use more in the spring. Oh, sorry. This one I'd probably use more in the spring, and I would just uh, throw it on one of my uh, seven, seven foot rods with uh, uh, with my uh, bait casting reel, and that's that's most likely what I would go with. Um, with me, if I'm using a bait casting, nine times out of ten, I've got a twenty to thirty pound braid with a fifteen pound uh, liter of fluorocarbon and about four feet long. I'd probably attach it to this and use it like that um, just because of the structure where I am that's it seems to be the best route for me so I that's what I would throw it with um, next thing uh, here we are the green mountain grabber uh, so green mountain sporting supplies and it is just one of your typical rigs and uh, it's got a number two hook, which is I like, because I like using a, a two or a one, and that for the hooks. So I really like that. I do like the fact that uh, it has a silver uh, blade. Um, I normally I use a chartreuse blade, and that, uh, but I've noticed some of the last times I've gone out, uh, the silver blades work better. So I'm really looking forward to using the silver blade and just seeing how it goes. Um, that one I just throw on one of my normal uh, seven foot spinning rods. Normally I use a, uh, an, uh, what is it, um, an SX40 Abu Garcia reel 
um, on either uh, one of my Shakespeare Ugly Sticks or my uh, uh, six foot six Volteus. Now I know a lot of you guys are going, why are you using such cheap rods? They're not cheap. To me, if Dave Mercer can catch a 100 pound plus shark on a Volteus, it's good. Uh, same thing with the ugly stick. I've never had a problem with an ugly stick. Um, I've broken Berkeley rods. I've broken all types of rods. But ugly sticks and Volteus rods seem to be the ones that work the best. Unfortunately, Shimano has stopped making the Volteus. And, and I was lucky to get... I was able to find two in Hamilton, Ontario. So, once again, if, if it's something you like, keep an eye on it. Because if they start to get stop making it, buy in bulk. Sometimes it'll be cheaper, but on the long run, if it's something that really works well for you, I always say get more of it. I do wish I could have got a couple more of my Volteus rods. Anyways, back to the box. I tend to go on tangents. Uh, so it's the true spin by Lunker Hunt. Lunker Hunt. Um, this is 13, 13 sixteenths of an ounce uh, weighted lure. Um, it's got the willow blade at the back. Um, and this says the realistic looking minnow, uh, shining spoon tail, an extra strong hook. Uh, this bait, uh, sorry, this is a bait you want to keep in your tackle box. I don't know. I've never used one of these before, uh, so I don't know what I would really rig it up on. I'd probably just rig it up on one of my universal rods, like um, a six foot six rod, spinning reel, with probably eight to ten pound mono, just to start, just to see how it works, and then from there decide on how I would change it up. Because to me, that's the best way to go is just to try it on a, what I call my multi species rods, and then figure out how I can tune it in from there. Um, it's a it's a brim color, um, so I don't know. I've never used any really brim colors here in Canada, but it's something I'm definitely gonna try um, in certain areas where I'm going, just to see how it's gonna work. And then I'm gonna go from there and see. So next off, we've got the Alabama Minnow by Charlie Worms. Now with this one, uh, it says you can't go wrong with a shad style bait that gives off as much vibration as this rig. Now it is scented, it says on the package. Um, uh, it says rig it any way you want. Let's see here. Uh, it's got more of a plastic scent than anything. So I mean, I don't know. Um, let's see here, sorry. It's kind of small too for what I would use it for. Um, I'm not big on using shad baits for walleye, uh, but like I said, this has got more of a plastic scent. Um, what I tend to do though, when I get a lot of these that are like plastic scent, I spray the heck out of these things with scent. Um, or I've got sticks of scent that I put on it just to try and get rid of that plastic smell and that. Because if I don't like it, I'm pretty sure the fish aren't gonna like it. So, but anyways, this is one that I'm definitely gonna try. I've never had a copper colored back with a white belly. Um, so I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. I don't know how well it's gonna work up here, but with this, once again, I just rig it on one of my multi-species rods because I'm not big on um, shad presentations and that because it's never worked for me for walleye. Although if I'm gonna use it for bass, I don't know. I would want a bigger shad bait, that's, that's all. Um, but with that being said, definitely I will use it. And once I figure out exactly what I'll use it on, how it's going to go, I'll let you guys know. Uh, last but not least is the Spin More Jig. And it's by North, uh, North Head Tackle. It says pair up your soft uh, plastics and live bait with this jig to add extra movement and visual presentation to its already flashy style. Um, the only thing I don't like is it doesn't say how heavy the, the jig head is because um, it does seem like it's a lighter one. So where I go to get to the walleye, if they're not up around the shoreline, like around walleye, like around, so, uh, great Kirk. Um, if they're not up around the shore, around wood pilings, the walleye are gonna be deeper. 
So, uh, with that being said, if the walleye are deep, these aren't going to do nearly enough for me. This would be something I'd more use for ice fishing for pike um, around Orangeville and some of the spots that, are, that I go where the, it gets maybe 10, 12 feet deep at the most. And that, um, so I'd probably use it for that. And with that, obviously, with my, I probably just use it on one of my ice fishing rigs. Um, which one I don't know because uh, they're all pretty much the same. And that uh, the only difference is I think one's got a, a fluoro type ice line, another one's got a braided type ice line. So, I mean, that's what I would use it for. Now, the prices of these, some of them seem to be pretty reasonable to me, to be honest with you. Um, the bomber is $649, which roughly in Canada, we probably find them for between that and eight bucks. So, I mean, that's that's fairly uh, reasonable, in my opinion. Uh, the, war uh, the rig, the Green Mountain uh, Sporting Supplies rig, that one, um, I find it hard to be 250 uh, because I can get a lot of my rigs up here for like under two bucks and they're handmade also um, I get them from a little shop up in North Bay Ontario when I go to visit family I always pop in and pick up a couple each time so to pay 250 for for that uh, unless it's made of fluorocarbon I haven't really checked yet but if it's fluoro then yeah I could see paying 250 if it's just mono like a lot of these are done from 250 no um, True spin, this is saying 649. So I I don't know if it's it says on here that it's new. So I I can't really say. I'm assuming that would be a fairly reasonable price for it. Um, the Alabama minnow uh, for a four pack is 250. They're saying for an eight pack is 499. Um, and then the spin more jig for a two pack is 524. So to me, that's fairly reasonable. Um, uh, personally, uh, would I use a lot of this? No. Will I use them? Definitely. I'm going to use them just to make sure that one, that well, I, I got them, I'm going to use them. But second off, it is. I want to learn new techniques uh, so some of this stuff I'm definitely going to try like this uh, the true spin I definitely want to try to see how it's going to run how it's going to work the rigs I always use so that's not that's not even a question the bomber I'm going to try adding weight just to see um, the Alabama minnow or the Alabama yeah the Alabama minnow sorry um, I'm gonna use and just see because I, like I said I don't use shad baits that often but if I can figure out a pattern with them definitely going to and the north uh, the knothead tackle um, jigs I'm probably just gonna wait and use for ice fishing so that being said that's most of the stuff I'm gonna use spring early summer I probably won't use fall because where I go fishing in the fall um, it's mainly gonna be just trolling with spoons so a lot of this is spring summer baits for me now I said at the beginning of the video that um, I'm gonna give a sh finally give the shout out to the person the first person that hit all my sites and the guy's name's Walter Lang so Walter thank you for liking them all um, and on top of that um, if you if you guys are watching pay attention in the next couple videos I will be giving out information on the second uh, contest which I will actually send you something I won't be just a simple shout out I will send you something but it's all gonna depend on the next little bit on what it is and when I know exactly what it is that's when the contest will be um, rele released and so please pay attention for that uh, second off I have got done some fishing recently um, I went out the long weekend here in Canada um, the May 2-4 is what we call it, or Victoria Day weekend, depending on your age range. Um, anyways, went out, took my daughters out on the Saturday, um, and my brother-in-law, and we caught nothing. Um, we only had two hours to fish, and that was due to the fact that where I took the boat on Lake Simcoe, uh, you had to pay f to launch your boat and pay for parking, and I didn't realize that it was five bucks an hour for parking. So 
I was only able to get two hours of uh, parking and uh, pay to launch my boat. Unfortunately, I haven't really fished Simcoe that much, so I didn't, wasn't able to get over where I wanted to to uh, do some fishing. I had to just settle with a different area, and unfortunately, nothing was biting. Um, we've had some weird weather up here, so I mean, we've had a lot a really hot stretch lately, so it was kind of one of those things that it was iffy on the bite. But we went out, had a good time nonetheless. Uh, the Sunday I took my brother-in-law and my daughters out and my wife out <coughs> to do some fishing up at a little uh, conservation uh, area just north of us, um, Island Lake Conservation Center in Orangeville. Uh, and we just did some pan fishing. We got some rock bass, some perch, some uh, sunfish, stuff like that. So we didn't. So I did get some on that weekend. Um, not much. I only got one. Um, and then. Um, Last week, I think it was, I went out, uh, took a day, went to uh, London, Ontario, uh, met up uh, with my uncle and my cousin, and uh, we did some fishing, and I saw the weirdest thing. We uh, went near the mouth of a bay, and we're fishing from the shore, uh, because where we were, we really can't take out um, boats unless you got kayaks or stuff like that, but um, in this little bay area, we had these pike blowing up like crazy and it looked like they were trying to um, go after bass. It was really weird because one of them looked like it had a bass in its mouth and it was fighting, but there were two other, two or three other ones that were, and they were just going nuts. And unfortunately where we were, we couldn't get a good look. So I don't know 100% what was happening, but it's the weirdest thing I ever saw and unfortunately I wasn't able to record it. Otherwise I, I played for you guys, but it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, and then we so we stayed there for a couple hours trying to cast into that area hoping that another pike or another fish would hit um, Unfortunately, nothing did uh, Excuse me, so we walked to another area set up and I Ended up just using my um, Pickerel rig cast out retrieve cast out retrieve did that for a little bit tossed out a hook bobber caught a little uh, largemouth did it again, caught a little sunfish, and then uh, probably about 20 minutes before we left, went back to a pickerel rig, you know, cast out, just slowly retrieve, and got another largemouth. So, I mean, um, has been the greatest start to my season, but it has been a pretty good start because at least I'm catching. So, once again, uh, thank you for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Um, just another thing, the podcast will be coming out um, hopefully at the end of this month. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from my first guest um, and that on uh, what time you know it's good to do the interview so once that happens and get everything done that's going to be going on uh, hopefully iTunes if I can get it set up by the end of this month if not it'll be coming out in July and then I'm hoping to do at least a podcast once a month same kind of deal so once again thank you for watching Hit the like, hit the subscribe, leave your comments, and let's remember, let's try and have a good summer. Let's keep fishing, and I'll talk to you on the next episode.